Hi, my name's Neil and welcome back to Reto for You and a very Merry Christmas to you all. I hope you're enjoying the holiday season and maybe sneaking a little time for your Reto projects. Before we get into today's review, I've got some exciting news. On December the 29th, we're hosting a live stream right here on the channel. It's going to be a Reto themed quiz with some fantastic game key prizes up for grabs. Joining me will be Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Reto Refix and Joseph Reto Bits. So it's shaping up to be a brilliant event. Make sure you tune in and I'd love to see you all there. Now let's talk about today's review. Banggood has sent me the Atuman E12 Soldier Iron to test out. It's portable, sleek and promises to deliver great performance, but does it live up to those promises? Let's crack on and find out. So the first thing we're going to do is to get this thing unwrapped. It is in here somewhere, so I'm just going to get the scissors and cut that open. So this is the Atuman E12 Convenient Soldering Iron. I've always fancied one of these. I've seen them online at Sector, but never tried one. So thanks to Banggood, I now own one of these. Now we're gonna give it a trial today, see how long it takes to heat up, etc. See how good it is at soldering. Now the front of the box looks quite well made. It's got the Atomin, it's got a picture of it. It's a bit like an Apple box, to be honest. Now on the back, we've got the PID temperature control, metal body, manual sleep, and four speed adjustable temperature. Now the operating voltage is nine to 24 volt. The temperature accuracy is plus or minus 5%. Input connector is a DC5525, which I guess is like a, a center pin one. Now, the temperature range is 300 to 400 degrees. Now, that's enough to do most jobs, isn't it? We'll try it on some bigger soldering later and some small soldering jobs as well. Just see how it handles these jobs. So, on that note, let's take a look inside this box. So here is the soldering iron. Now this is the actual iron itself. It's made of aluminium. It's very nice to hold actually with this rubber part here. Now you've got the DC input here that I talked about before and we also get a USB lead. Now it's a shame this has got a USB-C on the end. It didn't have an adapter so you could plug it up to the other power adapters. Now you also get a set of instructions which hopefully are in English as well so let's just have a look yes it is a very very short set of instructions it basically it says first indicator light is green constant light means the power is normal the machine enters a manual hibernation mode and slowly reduces to room temperature so press and hold the down key for three seconds to enter hibernation mode the indicator light is always on. Warming cooling is complete. Indicator light is flashing, means it's warming or cooling to the set temperature. Machine eats to power start. It'll be defaulted to the last temperature selected. So I guess if you're using it at 400 degrees, when you turn it back on, it'll go back to 400 degrees, which is okay. Now it's a manual sleep mode, so you've always got to remember to press and hold this down button for three seconds to turn it into sleep, otherwise it's going to get hot. Now, first looking at this, I can see it's got a very big tip on it. Now I'm used to using the smaller tips, but this could be handy for doing some of the larger soldering like cables, etc. Weight wise, it's not too bad, it's not too heavy, it's not too light, it seems to be okay. What would be nice, is if you can change these tips. I'm not sure whether you can, so let's just try and unscrew this and see if it removes. So we'll just undo that collar, and it looks like it does. So that is one good feature. I was a bit concerned that this was an all-in-one unit, and if the tips went, I thought, do you throw the whole lot away? So that is good that you can get tips. Maybe you can get some smaller tips and some different design of tips, because this is like the the knife one 
maybe you can get some very thin ones etc I'm not quite sure I need to look online and see if we can get any tips I'll get a scrap board and we'll run some tests on it and see how well it solders now how am I going to power this what I'm going to use is this now this is 9 volt at 2 amp so it's an 18 watt power supply and it's off the Oculus Quest as you can see this is all I could find at the moment so bear that in mind if you buy one of these you need to source a power supply for it, otherwise it won't work now it does work on more powerful supplies but like I say you're a bit limited with only USB-C but what I'm going to do is we're going to plug this in then we're going to plug that into the power I'm going to power it on and give it a test see how long it takes to heat up etc so without further ado let's crack on I'm just going to plug that in now and we're going to start see we've got three lights and one green at the bottom which is pulsating but we're plugged in as you can see this at the moment is stone cold so what we're going to do is we're going to set it to its first setting which is 300 degrees and we're going to time to see how long it takes to get to 300 degrees and then we're going to do some soldering there it goes it's flashing when that starts flashing it's hit the temperature So approximately 42 seconds, which isn't that bad, considering it's only running off a 9 volt supply. Now I know you can run more power through that, so obviously the more power it'd probably heat up quick enough, but 43 seconds isn't that bad. So we tried 9 volt and it took 43 seconds to heat up, which wasn't that bad to be honest, it's quite quick. I mean, remember the old days where you had to wait minutes and minutes and minutes for things to heat up, so this so far has been very good. So what I thought next was, let's try the maximum voltage, 24 volt, and I'll try it onto my power supply here. So just to prove this is 24 volt, I've got that connected there. We're just going to check this here to check the voltage. And as you can see on the meter there, 24 volt. So what we're going to do next is we're going to connect that up and we're going to time it again to see how long it takes to get to temperature. What do you guys reckon it's going to do? 10 seconds? 20 seconds maybe 15 who knows it's claimed to do six seconds i think is its fastest so let's just see if this works or not we're about to start the experiment you can see here that is stone cold it's not burning my flesh off and i'm not screaming in pain as it goes over me i can grab it look and it's perfectly okay so what we're going to do is we're going to connect the power up and I'm going to try and start this and start the timer at the same time. So bear with me. This takes a bit of practice. So off we go. That is it. Eight seconds. Now that was blindingly fast. And just to prove to you that it has heated up. I get some soda. You can see that is melting. Look, can you see the solder on the end? So that's it. Eight seconds. Wasn't six, but it was close enough. It could have been six. Maybe I wasn't quick enough when it hit the temperature. Well, you can see straight away that has warmed up very quick. So that just proves if you can get a 24 volt good enough amperage power supply for this, this will work very, very well so with that in mind now let's go see what this thing solders like so what we're going to do we're going to try solder these two diodes into place now this is one of the blue scuzzy boards which we built last week there'll be a link down below to that video if you'd like to watch it if you haven't watched it before to give that a watch if you like soldering so you can see there that is warming up and that solder is flowing in nicely 
So that's soldered well. The same as this, and this is at 350 degrees. Now that soldered through lovely to the other side. And we'll just solder in the other end here. Again, that soldered lovely. Now the iron itself, although it is very big, like I say, is actually doing the job fine. So I'm just going to give it a go on some of these very small pins here, because I know these can be a bit of a pain to solder. So you can see the ones we did solder there, them four pins did solder it and it had no bridges. The only thing I found about this is you can manage to solder small parts, but the actual tip is probably better for bigger solder jobs. So if it does have exchangeable tips, that would make this one really good. Next we're going to try it on this spectrum board here. We just want to see if it will melt these pads because these pads are big. And straight away. That melted really easy. You can see there, I just had to touch that. Look at that. Can you see that? Same with this one. Straight away, no problem. So, for this type of job, it's absolutely brilliant. Where I might have struggled with a smaller soldering iron, I just touch them and they're gone. So, let's just try these pads here. There's some big pads here as well. I haven't put any flux, but again. You can see that's gone to total liquid. Next, again, liquid. So for the older stuff, having this big tip is absolutely fantastic. You see there, it's just melted that. Just like that, that's gone to liquid. So that's the Atuman E12 soldering iron. A compact portable tool that's great for smaller jobs and quick fixes. At around £18, is it worth it? I say yes, especially if you're just starting out or need something lightweight and easy to use. Will I be using it? Absolutely, for things like the repair cafe I volunteer at. It's perfect. It saves me lugging around all my equipment and it's ideal for quick on-the-spot repairs. Big thank you to Banggood for sending this over to me to review. It's always fun to test out new tools and share my thoughts with you. Don't forget, on December the 29th, we're hosting the live stream right here on Reto for You. Captain Commodore, 8-Bit Reto Refix, Joseph Reto Bits and I will be running a Reto themed quiz. There are many fantastic game key prizes to be won. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'd love to see you all there. Thanks so much for watching and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any of the future fun. As always, let's crack on and I'll see you next time on Reto4U. See you soon guys, bye!